of a love bomber like a predator, but instead of chasing their prey, they're attracting it. They're lining up the treats of affection and validation and praise and love until you walk right into their snare. YouTube. Welcome to my sacred space. My name is Lauren Victoria. I am a mental health therapist and certified sound and vibration healer. I also offer spiritual life coaching and own an apothecary by the name of the Street. So I was recently scrolling through my YouTube analytics and didn't even recognize how big of a population of young women are subscribed to this channel. Listen to this video in its entirety because it is especially for you. In my line of work, the topics of abusive or toxic relationships come up all the time. And oftentimes, I'm talking to people in their 30s, 40s, 50s plus who are still struggling with failing relationships. That said, the video is for any and everybody. But again, if you're a young woman or you know a young woman who needs to hear this, please share it and let them know to listen. Let's start this conversation off with a clear definition of the topic. I'm speaking about love bombing. Love bombing is a term that is often associated with narcissistic personalities in relationships. Now, love bombing can be a trait of a narcissist personality, but it does not necessarily mean that the person who is love bombing you is a narcissist. If you have questions or concerns about somebody's behavior, I suggest you refer them to a licensed psychologist or counselor like myself. Now in short, love bombing is an attempt to influence or manipulate another person by showing acts of attention and affection. In practice, it also looks like showering someone with so much love that they become dependent or even obligated to the relationship. Now to a naive or unsuspecting eye, it can just look like a hopeless romantic or somebody who goes all in, they're either very hot or very cold. But in actuality, love bombing is a form of manipulation and a trait that you want to stay far, far away from. Before we get more into understanding what love bombing is, I think it's important to talk about why we as human beings are so susceptible to it. We as human beings are all natural born lovers. And no, this is not where I make my case about shrooms and free love, though I fuck with that too. <laughs> I'm talking in the literal sense of how we are biologically wired to interact with one another in the world. In our earliest years, this is understood as our attachment style. Essentially, our relationship of security and safety with our caregivers. At three months old, you learn to scream and cry to communicate your needs, and a caregiver ideally shows up to soothe you with a bottle or a new diaper or just a simple hug. This same process continues as we get older and step into more challenging situations. You start to form a relationship with the world based on how you have learned that your needs are seen and met by your parents. A healthy relationship with your caregivers fosters an environment of confidence and safety in your well-being. You learn that whatever challenge that life brings your way, you have a secure emotional connection with somebody who can see and meet your needs. Unfortunately, in less ideal situations, however, you end up looking for that type of emotional security and safety externally in the world. People with severely impaired attachments to their caregivers are oftentimes the most susceptible to someone like a love bomber. For someone who feels isolated from the world or unseen or unimportant, that sudden onset of attention, love, and praise is literally intoxicating. It feels like you finally met that person in the world who shows you and tells you that you're important, you're safe, and you're okay. Until they aren't that person anymore. And you're left questioning what is it you've done wrong or how you can improve and just get back a taste of that same attention. Again, it can be hard to really decipher if you're being love bombed because it just looks like the romance from the movies. 
You have their 100% undivided attention. It feels like they see no one else in the world but you. They're writing you love letters. They're bragging about you to their friends. They're sending you flowers and chocolates. They're talking about your wedding day. They're telling you that you're beautiful and perfect and sexy and they're just making you feel so good as if they know everything that you need to hear. Now these actions in themselves are not toxic or manipulative. You can very much have a partner who treats every day like it's Valentine's Day, and if that is the case, good for you. <laughs> but the telltale sign of love bombing is going to be an abrupt change in this behavior. You're going to blink and all of a sudden, not only has the love and affection stopped coming, but now they seem cold and mean or even flat out abusive. This change is intentional and represents the moment that they are starting to show you their true colors. Think of a love bomber like a predator, but instead of chasing their prey, they're attracting it. They're lining up the treats of affection and validation and praise and love until you walk right into their snare. You're no longer being called sexy and smart and beautiful. Now they criticize you or can't stand to look at you. They're no longer taking you on dates or showering you with gifts. Now they are demanding that you give them money. Once they have you, you're already trapped. You have this turbulent attachment and intoxicating love hormones associated with the relationship. It's really hard for you to let go. This is the way that love bombers are then able to manipulate you to get what they want. And this is where we see why love bombing is often associated with narcissistic personality types. So how do you avoid love bombers and love bombing situations? The answer is to be aware and alert. Stay woke, y'all, stay woke. And the most important thing to pay attention to is yourself. I'm going to link an attachment style quiz in the description box below. Please check that out because it's going to give you an idea of what type of motivations and behaviors are shaping your relationship patterns. Once you have this understanding, you may start to better realize if and how you're self-sabotaging healthy relationships. Number two, be aware of the speed and intensity at which you form relationships. So yes, you want to pay attention to your own actions and behaviors here again, but also the actions and behaviors of your potential partner. Has it been a week and they're telling you they love you? Has it only been two months and they're trying to fly you out to Cabo? Think about why somebody is moving as quickly as they are. Number three, ask questions. Check the motives of your potential partners. When somebody tells me, Oh, I love you. Oh, you're so beautiful. I just love this about you. You know what I say? Why? <laughs> Why? How? And not because I don't know that I'm lovable. I want to hear what you verbalize about how you see me as a person. How do you acknowledge my value as a human being? Is it because of my trauma history and how strong and resilient I am? Is it because I'm just so sexy and you can't stop thinking about me? These answers carry a lot of underlying meaning. And once you get somebody talking, you can really decipher what their motives truly are. Okay, editing Lauren here, who is assuming that some of you may not have a problem with the example responses I just gave. My point with those is that you want somebody who can tell you why they like you for your unique traits and personality, not just for the emotional or physical labor that you offer them, nor for generalized statements that could apply to literally any other human being. Number four, place your boundaries early. It is very hard to place a boundary after it has already been crossed. And it is even harder to do this when it comes to flattery. Like, yes, I love that you are showing me so much affection and attention. I love flowers, I love chocolate, but I don't know if we need to see each other every day this early. I don't know if I'm comfortable with you showing up at my job. I don't know if I'm necessarily ready for you to move in with me yet. Setting clear boundaries will not only protect you, but it will also show a love bomber or potential narcissist that you're someone who speaks up and advocates for themselves, which will be a red flag for them. And lastly, pay attention to the roller coaster ups and downs. 
again, it is 100% possible to find a partner who makes you feel like you are in a fairy tale every single day. But if that is contrasted with polarizing behavior like abuse and criticism, things that make you feel small and scared, then this is likely a form of manipulation that comes with love bombing. Again, my name is Lauren Victoria, and I'm so glad that you checked out this video. If this was helpful for you, or you think that it can be helpful for somebody you know, please share it and tell them to watch. I am on social media on all platforms as The Highest Priestess, that's the with an A, and you can find me sharing mental health, wellness, and spirituality content all across these internet streets. In the meantime, if you want to connect with me for a sound bath, life coaching session, or therapy session if you're in Illinois, check out the link in the description box below, and I will see you guys in another video. Bye!